Hey everybody, welcome to my sequential games with perfect information video. Uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to find a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in a sequential game with perfect info. Uh, proofs beyond the scope of this video say that there will always be at least one SPNE in a game like this, and there might be more. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use backwards induction to find the SPNE in a game like this. First thing I want to do is I want to talk about what the subgames are. A subgame is when you look at a certain piece of the game. So like this one. A subgame is anything that starts with this, this decision node. So there's a subgame. Here's a different subgame. Here's a different subgame. Here's a different subgame. And there's four there. But that's not all of it. There are also subgames here and here because once again we've got decision nodes at the head of a game and so when I look at this chunk on either of these sides that's like a whole game in and of itself only it's a subset of this larger game alright so there's our start so we're going to use backwards induction and what we're going to do is we're basically going to look at each subgame. We're going to find the Nash equilibrium of each subgame. And then there will be one that fits all of them, basically. So if I look at this, if I look at blue player, uh, I need to analyze each of these last four subgames here, 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 and here. So on the left, I know that if we're looking at this game over here, so blue's already played L, red's played L, and now the choice is A or B, well, it's pretty obvious blue would prefer to have A because 20 is greater than 0. Now, if, on the other hand, red had played right, 3 is greater than 2, so blue would choose B. And then similar reasoning, we have B choices over here. We've already found the Nash equilibriums of four of the games. Very simple games, there's only one choice from one player, but there, those are four Nash equilibria of those subgames. Now let's look at uh, how the red player should respond, or how the red player should play, knowing that these are blue's choices. Red. Let's look at this side first, a choice between left and right. If red goes left and blue follows its Nash equilibrium strategy, we'll wind up down here with a payoff of three. If red goes right and blue does its Nash equilibrium strategy, we'll wind up with a payoff of four. So red's optimal strategy is to go right. And now we've got a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium for this larger game. Likewise, we can figure out this one over here because this 10 is greater than this 2. I can ignore these outcomes, uh, one because they're dominated, but also just because we're never going to get to them because blue won't let it happen. And so now. We can combine these two subgames into a bigger game. Uh, the initial choice of left or right. Blue knows that if blue goes left, there will be an eventual payoff of three. But if blue goes right, there will be an eventual payoff of four. And so blue will choose to go right. So all I've done is I've done backwards induction. I've looked at each subgame and figured out what's going to happen. So how do I compile all of these answers? Subgame Nash, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium looks like this. Blue will play R. But if we're at the LL node, choose A. And if we're at any of these other nodes, choose B. Red will choose L. No, sorry. For red, if blue chose L, choose R. And if blue chose R, choose L. Now, some of these might seem redundant. For instance, I know 
that we are never going to get to this LL or to this LR. Why? Because my initial strategy is play R. So that's fine. We can narrow down these options really quick. But the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium outlines what you should do at each node. So even if we know that these won't happen, and it's really a choice between a couple of different options, subgame perfect lists all strategies for all nodes. And so with all that, what is the actual outcome we expect our Nash equilibrium outcome? I recognize that all of these strategies that I am currently erasing are all part of the Nash equilibrium strategy. But this baby is what I expect to be my Nash equilibrium outcome. And so it should look something like this. So I don't know how your professor does notation. You'll have to figure that out. But there's the basic logic of finding an SPNE when there's perfect information. Hope it was helpful for you guys. Good luck, happy econing, and enjoy your game theory.